Good evening. We are here to present our hold recommendation on Luxoft Holding Incorporation with a 12 month target price of $59.07, offering a 6% upside to its closing price on January the 1st. Our recommendation is based on firm's intrinsic growth potential, positioning among comparable peers, and supported by favorable industry outlook. So let's start with the company overview. Luxoft is an international outsourcing software development company whose clients are mainly large international corporations. It offers software development and support, product engineering, technology consulting, and innovative IT solutions. Luxoft was founded in 2000 under the direction of Dmitry Leshchinin, who still is CEO and president. Since an IPO in 2013, the firm has been listed on the New York Stock Exchange. About 91% of its shareholders' voting power belong to IBS Group, which is a Russian IT holding. Luxoft operates in 21 countries. It has about 13,000 workers within 42 offices, including offshore, nearshore, and onshore delivery capabilities. This enables company to benefit from cheaper labor and premises costs and keep communication with clients at a convenient distance and in a close time zone. Luxoft's engineering headcount consists of 11,200 employees concentrated primarily in Central and Eastern Europe. Other geographies include North America, Western Europe, and Asia. In the trailing 12 months, Luxoft got $848 million of revenue, focusing most of its resources on four main operating verticals. Financial services vertical concentrated 57% of sales and includes two top clients of Luxoft, Deutsche Bank and UBS. The next two were automotive and transport and telecommunications, concentrating respectively 16 and 11% of sales. Finally, healthcare and pharmaceuticals, with 4% of sales, which became the fourth main operating vertical in financial year 17 after it was entered by an acquisition on offenses. Besides, Luxoft also operates in technology, travel and aviation, retail, energy, agriculture, and other verticals, uniting them under the title of digital enterprise. Luxoft's strategy is long-term oriented. Firstly, company actively expands its delivery model. Four new offices were opened over trailing 12 months, and future expansion in Asia, Central Eastern Europe, and other regions is expected. Secondly, Luxoft makes strategic acquisitions and collaborates with leading companies, including uh, Murex, OpenLink, and Calypso in order to develop its service offering. Thirdly, Luxoft is committed to recruiting and developing a high-quality workforce and plans to limit engineering exposure in any, in any country at 25%. Finally, Luxoft focuses on the development of new service offering on base of innovative digital technologies, including big data, Internet of Things, digital experience, DevOps, and mobile. The company plans to uh, reach um, to increase its total revenue by two times in three five years period. Now let's take a look at industry overview. Worldwide IT industry is going to constitute about $3.5 trillion in 2017 and has a potential to grow at 3.3% CAGR till 2021. The main industry trend is the adoption of digital technologies, which are expected to drive 75% of IT spending by 2019. Luxoft operates in two industry segments, IT um, services and enterprise software which uh, together are going to reach about uh, 1.2 trillion dollars in 2017 and so both of them are expected to grow faster than the whole IT industry by uh, 2021. Uh, outsourcing is going to contribute 60 percent of uh, global IT services uh, growth. Geographically, uh, the third part of um, IT spending occurs in North America. Uh, then goes APEC and Europe with about uh, a quarter each. Moreover, as IT industry is percyclical, favorable world uh, GDP growth forecast over the next six years support the optimistic industry outlook. The competition in IT industry is high and is expected to intensify in the future. We identified 13 main competitors, which are based in India, CE, and other countries, and have enough resources to provide similar services. Then we compared uh, several indicators for the period of trailing 12 months. Due to analysis, uh, Luxoft has a 13.4% ROI, that is nearly uh, five, percentage time, uh, five percentage points lower than average across competitors. 
uh, its net income and a bit margin being uh, respectively 6.7 and 7.5% that are about uh, two times lower than average across competitors. However, being younger and smaller, uh, Luxoft has shown uh, the second highest three-year sales uh, CAGR of about 23% and the fourth highest uh, sales on employee of about $64,800. So in terms of financials, Luxoft has a controversial competitive position. Both intrinsic and relative approaches were used in valuation. The first one was the safe approach for which we used a free cash flow to the firm method. We made a seven years projection of revenue growth based on Luxoft strategic targets and cost structure based mainly on historical proportions of revenue. As for cost of equity, sorry, there is a small inaccuracy. It's cost of equity instead of cost of capital in the top. So cost of equity was calculated using the capital asset pricing model and adjusted to the weighted average country risk premium in of the countries where Luxoft sells its services, while cost of debt was estimated as an average interest rate of on the company's bank borrowings. Uh, as a result, a weighted average cost of capital of 8.6% was derived. For terminal value estimation, a stable growth model was applied with a perpetuity growth rate of 2.34%. Finally, a target price of $69.52 was derived with an upside of about 25%. For relative valuation, three multiples were calculated for the period of trailing 12 months. An appropriate group of 13 peers was selected in compliance with requirements of being IT services and software outsourcing company, can sales in North America, Europe, and Asia, and serving clients in financial industry and at least in two of the uh, healthcare, telecom, and auto industries. The results showed that Luxoft is overvalued due to P2E ratio and EV to EBITDA ratios and undervalued due to P2S ratio. An average target price of three multiples is $48.61, which is about 13% lower than the current price. Uh, in conclusion, we decided to treat the both methods equally uh, in order to reduce their limitations. Because the CF approach has a significant dependence on terminal value, while multiples have a wide range and a small amount of comparable peers. So again, we issue a whole recommendation on Luxoft Holding Corporation with a 12% target, 12-month 12, 12 target price of $59.07, offering a 6% upside to its closing price on January the 1st. Uh, in addition, we decided to use Monte Carlo simulation by modeling revenue and cost expenses increase, as well as the risk of unpredictable costs with normal distribution and the risk of uh, effective tax rate change with subnormal distribution. Uh, the simulation has proven our hold recommendation. The last part of our presentation is about investment risks. We have distributed them into the three categories, market, regulatory, and operational risks, and ordered them by their impact and probability, creating a risk matrix. And now we will take a closer look at three of them, which have the highest impact and probability. The first one is a macroeconomic risk. It is associated with the slowdown of the global economy growth. There is a high correlation coefficient of 0.92 between the world GDP and IT services spending over the last eight years. Therefore, a future decrease in GDP growth rates of certain geographical regions may decrease the Luxoft revenue there. In addition, based on beta of 1.32, any stock market fall would result in a larger drop of Luxoft share price. The second one is the concentration risk, which demonstrates a significant budgeting power of Luxoft's customers. Therefore, in in financial year 2017, in the right two thirds of total Luxoft revenue from only 10 clients. Deutsche Bank, as a company's main customer, alone contributed to 23%, and together with four other biggest clients, to 55% of Luxor's revenue. However, the company has been successfully decreasing top clients' concentration over the last three years and plans to lower it more in the future. The third one is an acquisition risk. Luxor has made eight acquisitions over the last three years with the aim to expand its expertise and the new domains and geographies. Some of them may not meet the company's expectations because of overwhelming synergies, high complexity, difficult cultural fit. Thank you for listening. Questions are welcomed.
Okay, thank you very much, uh, team, for your presentation. You're the first one, the most difficult, so great job. And I have to start with, I have the question to go with your risks. You said uh, uh, they did 12, uh, 12 M&A deals, and you have here five. So why, uh, why do you think they were so aggressive in M&A strategy, and what is the strategy going for in terms of non-organic non growth uh, in the next five years? Um, they are pursuing um, such as such aggressive acquisition strategy because Luxoft is expanding its um, expertise through uh, M&A transactions, and uh, it's also part of geographical expansion. Uh, for example, um, they um, acquired. Uh, uh, for uh, the IT, IT outsourcing company that works with uh, clients for, mm, uh, from a uh, pharmaceutical industry and they entered this uh, uh, industry segment firstly in financial year 17. Luxoft is planning uh, future expansion into uh, Asia and uh, CE countries. Uh, they uh, have written that in the annual report. Thank you for your presentation. You mentioned that uh, one of the same person is the president and CEO of the company. Um, can you say more about the corporate governance? Do you see any risk in the corporate governance of this company? Uh, I mean, how well it's managed, how structured the corporate governance? Thank you. Uh, okay, um, its uh, government team uh, consists of 14 uh, members. Uh, we said about uh, CEO and president, uh, uh, he um, worked uh, in company from it's uh, started from uh, 2000 years. Uh, and uh, we can say that um, uh, companies, uh, governments is uh, good because um, uh, in 2008 and 2009 years, uh, when uh, was uh, world uh, crisis, uh, the company um, was stable, the company grows, so we decide that uh, it, um, uh, it's still about uh, good um, governments, about good team. And also um, the company has audit and compensation committee. Uh, the audit committee is uh, obligatory to, ha uh, to have due to SEC requirements, but compensation committee is not obligatory to have. And they have uh, three uh, independent uh, uh, me board members um, due, um, considering uh, SEC uh, requirements. Thank you very much for your presentation. I have a question regarding the forecast. You estimate the growth from 2018 to 2024, uh, almost three times, right, in terms of free cash flow to the firm. What is the key driver for that? And uh, do you have any sensitivity analysis to understand what could be potential outcomes if certain risks happen. So what would be the potential free cash flow to the firm if certain risks crystallize? Uh, our, our growth estimations were based on Luxor strategic targets. Uh, we also considered the fact that as company becomes bigger, uh, its uh, growth slows down. Uh, so uh, we projected a CAGR of about 16% till 2024. And moreover, we used management guidance for our revenue projection, considering the fact that a company has reached its um, revenue targets over the last three financial years, and a bit of margin was in range of managerial expectations. So we think that management of the company is better aware of uh, current situation in the company and uh, growth potential of each uh, industry vertical. As for sensitivity, uh, our free cash flow model is uh, sensitive to terminal growth and, uh, uh, and to weighted average cost of capital. Okay, about sensitivity, uh, we included in it in our Monte Carlo uh, and uh, uh, there, are there is um, higher sensitivity from uh, uh, growth of um, ineffective uh, tax rate uh, because now it's uh, about um, 
eight nine uh, percent. Uh, but uh, in industry, it's higher. It's about 17 percent. And uh, in uh, Luxoft's main competitor, uh, Yapam, it's about uh, 20, 21 percent. Uh, so uh, increases in tax rate, tax rate may um, affect uh, to net income and uh, um, to increase um, net income and affect to uh, multiples for the company. Okay, uh, another company, you mentioned uh, one of the top risks would be concentration risk and you mentioned Deutsche Bank. If you know the situation, uh, the problems that the Deutsche Bank had uh, recently, uh, what was the effect on Luxoft? Uh, Deutsche Bank is uh, uh, a main client of Luxoft and concentrates the most significant part of revenue. And uh, mm, when Britain voted to leave the European Union, uh, Deutsche Bank had um, uh, declined in its share price, and there was correlation between share price of Deutsche Bank and Luxoft, so Luxoft shares also dropped. Uh, we can see that uh, on uh, our stock, uh, stock uh, graph, historical stock graph. And now the revenue uh, growth rates from Deutsche Bank, they are decreasing, but uh, we um, expect uh, revenues from other clients to uh, rebalance the um, revenue breakdown because uh, cl uh, other cli revenue from other clients outside, outside of top 10 accounts, they are growing very rapidly now and it will rebalance uh, the revenue breakdown. Um. The upside that you suggest for this stock is 6% and uh, <coughs> cost of capital, which I think is actually cost of equity, but you call yes, it cost yes. of capital, is 8.3%, 6%, uh, which is higher than the upside that you suggest. I mean, don't you think that any logical equity investor would consider this stock as a sell? If potential return is lower than the cost of equi equity for this stock. We consider to give a whole recommendation um, because it's, uh, its upside is between 5% and 15% and it's a traditional uh, way of giving a recommendation. Uh, what do you think, uh, uh, how do you explain uh, that uh, Ukraine uh, Ukraine is, uh, first of all, the largest office here for Luxoft uh, globally, and the growth rate is the largest. What do you think would be pro and cons uh, to do, to implement such a strategy of increasing uh, personal here at the fastest rate? Luxoft has about uh, three and a half thousand specialist engineers in Ukraine. Uh, it, it's a, a very comfortable destination, and because of uh, low wages, uh, low premises costs and uh, high um, and high quality specialists. Um, so Luxoft benefits from all these characteristics um, and uh, it's also pursuing a long-term strategy of uh, uh, decreasing its uh, engineering exposure to any geography to no more than 25%. So uh, number of engineers in Ukraine will decrease now it's about 30%, 31%. Uh, moreover, Luxoft has, uh, moreover, Luxoft has uh, many offices in Ukraine and uh, has a partnership with the uh, universities. It uh, uh, suggests uh, training courses for its professionals, so it's uh, a good uh, engine for getting uh, high quality human resources. What is the VIDA multiple you applied for relative valuation? And uh, whether you performed any normalization adjustments to that EBITDA? Uh, EBITDA multiple uh, for Luxoft is, uh, is uh, 14. And for and the median EBITDA, EV to EBITDA multiple for its peers is uh, 18. Um, so Luxoft is undervalued due to EV to EBITDA. Oh, uh, sorry, overvalued due to EV to EBITDA multiple. Uh, no adjustments uh, were made. Uh, 
Thank you.